to gleep clap and floop de doo from Stag. Here we go. Another story. This takes place at the end of summer 2005. My partner and I are finishing up FTO and preparing to go to the academy. Mm. I would go before him, graduate in January of 06, and he would go and graduate in March of 06. Mm. This would put us each completing the academy prior to our one year from date of hire requirement by state statute to attend and graduate the academy. It's a boring Saturday filled with reports, a handful of traffic stops, and the annoying complaints from busybodies with nothing but boxed wine and cats. We're the only two patrolmen on duty that day, which was odd. Normally there'd be three of us and one supervisor. Well, Sarge is in charge that day. We're in the squad room, and this is before the sunglasses incident. Sarge gets up from his desk, rubs his face, and says, All right, fuckers, I'm going to go find a place to take a nap. You two go down to the basement and start prepping the weed bricks for the DEA to destroy and get rid of those paintball guns we took off those kids a few weeks back. (laughs) <laughs> oh, and uh, get the sim guns clean and ready for force on force training next week. I'm pretty sure the bazooka I built when I was a kid <laughs> wound up, you know, in the Oak Park Police Station. It oh, yeah. probably showed on and off for years. They probably did. If I recall, <laughs> I saw some of my wares in their display case, but I don't. Re- the, the I saw one of the rockets. That I don't remember <laughs> if I saw the actual bazooka. We should see if they can get in touch with some of those old Oak Park PD guys. <laughs> Man, I was an a-hole. <laughs> we head to the basement. Sarge calls dispatch on the radio, informing them he's on traffic on one of the main streets. And the PD, this is code for I'm taking a nap or I'm ducking calls. Don't bug me unless it's life or death. Dispatch takes this as he's running radar, and that's the official meaning of it. We go downstairs. The two detectives are down there gathering up that week's evidence and going upstairs. They pass us. They let me set up the layout of the basement here. On the west side was the LT's office, shared by all three LT's. Mm. Next to that on the north side, the victim's advocate office, where a cool VA and a crusty cunt of a VA worked. Mm. Crusty cunt was in that day. As you proceed around the stairwell, an evidence locker wall looks like mailboxes in a post office, and then the evidence vault is to the south. Next to the vault was the exit to the parking lot slash alley and a small gym that we would, could use and rarely ever got used. We had memberships to the rec center provided by the city for free to all employees, and we had a local gym. We enter the open evidence vault and begin hauling out bricks and bricks of weed. weed. At, at least a ton of weed. 2,000 pounds by our estimates. This wow. isn't just your normal cheap Mexican ditch weed. This is the shit from Colorado, Cali, even shit from Michigan and beyond. This is good stuff. Huh? As we stack this up in idea forms, we share a look. Hey, didn't Sarge say to get rid of the paintball guns and, and to clean the simulation guns too? I ask. My partner grins and then races from the basement. He goes to the third floor where we kept training gear, spare vests, Uniforms, radios, riot gear, and the red man suit. He comes down several times. Uppers for our ARs, paintball masks, simunition glocks. By then, <laughs> I had pulled out the confiscated paintball guns. Crusty Quantaha VA exits her office, gives a look, and goes upstairs. My partner looks to me. You know we need to find out if these things work. Sounds legit. But we can't just shoot each other. We need more targets. <laughs> My partner races to the LT's office and calls upstairs to the detectives. Moments later, we hear them racing down the stairs. <laughs> we set to work building walls of pot bricks three feet high in various corners of the basement. Crusty <laughs> 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 Quanta Javier returns. She looks to the four of us now gathered around a table, arming our weapons. I don't want to know anything. Leave me out of it. Clean up your messes. <laughs> All right, so she was being cool at that. Good answer. We don our masks, establish the rules, no nut shots. This rule was quickly forgotten. <laughs> if they're using sea munitions, that shit is, po- is painful course. as hell. The, the no nut shots rule is always quickly forgotten. No. The battle ensues. Paintballs, sea munition rounds flying through the air. Walls are hit. Pot forts are struck. It's a war zone down there. <laughs> <laughs> Our Sarge calls out that he's back at the station. Panic grips my partner and I. We're fucked. Sarge enters the basement door and freezes. He looks at the paintball mess and then the three of us. One detective is hiding in a corner with a training Glock. 
<laughs> Sarge slowly enters. He walks to the table, picks up a mask and a training Glock. He turns and is instantly hit in the nuts by the hidden detective. Nice! <laughs> he drops to the ground, vowing to get even with that fat motherfucker. Shots <laughs> ring out and the games are back on. <laughs> Sarge races past the VA's door as we all start firing. He returns fire and then turns the knob and throws open the door to the VA's office. Errant paintball flies through the air. Sarge does the action movie tuck and roll. Impressive considering he was still in duty gear, as were we. Mm. Only people in street clothes were the dicks in their suits and ties. The paintball enters the office and time slows as we all watch the paintball <laughs> it felt like an eternity until it hit the wall with a loud smack paint showers the victim's advocate she screams why the fuck is wrong with you fucking retards <laughs> she, she stormed out of her office and runs upstairs we shrug it off and continue until we hear a throat clear at the top of the steps it's the chief. Nice. And judging by the look on his face, we're in for a world of shit. Yeah. He takes in the scene around the basement. Wax and paint splattered on doors and walls. Pock, pot brick forts set up in corners. Three uniformed officers and two detectives armed with paintball and ammunition guns looking back at him from behind our masks. To our shock, he steps in. Force on force training. Yes, sir. Just uh, getting the boys ready for the academy, Sarge says. All right. Next time, not in the basement. I get this shit cleaned up. Sergeant, <laughs> I'd like to have a word with you in my office. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just going to get a, an ass chew and I like yeah. The two vanish and we scramble to clean up the mess. We finish inventory, put away the toys, head up to the squad room, still covered in paint and wax. Sarge enters the squad room, doesn't say a word. We ask him what happened, and he says, like I said, force on force training. We nod, knowing he probably had duct tape holding his ass together after the reaming he just got. A few days pass, and things cool off, and DEA takes the weed. We escort them to the dump. They toss it in the burn pile. Along with the fire department, we watch it burn along with the trees and brush and grass from landscaping. Could you imagine living nearby when they do that? So just, I'm going to throw the windows open for some fresh air. I'm hungry. I don't know why. Yeah, 20 tons of that high-grade weed. Whew. That's, that's, that's millions all, and millions of yeah, dollars. Yeah, 2,000 pounds of weed. That's a lot of fucking weed. Whew. Ah, yeah, too bad. It's a waste. <laughs> we return to the department to find memos and our mailboxes and cubby holes from the chief. From here on out, all paintball guns collected from teens around town are to be destroyed immediately unless involved in a criminal incident involving property destruction or damage. No exceptions. Well, we got the message. Hmm. But it didn't specify how they were to be destroyed or if we had to submit proof of destruction. I ended up with about 15 paintball guns that I didn't have to pay for. <laughs> I had so many, as did my LT, Sarge, and partner, and a few of the good officers that we started selling them to teens on the street who were getting bullied and paintballed by asshat rich kids. Yes! Yeah! That's a thug life right I like there. that right there. We also each went out of town to various Walmarts and sporting goods stores around the state to buy more. The chief had to answer to the mayor, the city manager, and the city council as to how only 100 paintball guns had been sold at various stores, but the department was confiscating hundreds more. Hmm. And how were so many kids getting paintball guns that their parents couldn't account for? He asked all of us. We didn't have an answer. It's odd how things happen when you're a dick. <laughs> Even stranger, some assholes kept paintballing the chief's house, his personal and department vehicle, his fence, his wife's car. It was all so odd. <laughs> That's kind of weird, yeah. <laughs> and even stranger, it was happening to prison guards and dickhead deputy sheriffs that nobody liked. They had lists of enemies miles long. It was even odd how suddenly meth houses were getting marked by orange or blue paintballs. <laughs> Which then allowed us to show up and tweakers being tweakers snitched on themselves, giving us probable cause. Damn. <laughs> That's beautiful. 
It was even stranger that the perv and convicted kid diddler kept getting shot with paintballs whenever he got close to an elementary school. <laughs> All right. That's oh, fitting. Shit. It's fitting. He filed complaints, but oddly enough, we never found the subjects doing it. <laughs> Eventually, the paintballing stopped. Odd that it coincided with myself and my partner each attending the police academy. I, I don't know the reason, but it all stopped just as suddenly as it had begun. As for the bullies picking on kids, well, when you fuck with kids weaker than you, you end up with multicolored cars. You also end up with lots of fines and, oddly, five or six paintball guns that were now banned in the city at the time of these incidents, somehow in your possession when you were stopped for picking on a kid. Wow. How strange. Perhaps these were the kids doing this? Yeah, we'll never know for certain, but all the evidence say they did, and then oddly shot up their own vehicles, costing their rich parents some insurance premium hikes. <laughs> oh, man, that's a good one. That is good. That's good. <laughs> Woo! That is freaking beautiful, man. No, that's, uh, some good, like, that, that's a good story. I used to mess with uh, Sergeant Penn, who used to live down the street from me. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he was the uh, sergeant in charge of the juvenile wing of the police department. Oh, all right. Lived. And uh, he's the one that put together the, the thick dossier, that, and he gave it to the Army recruiters. Oh, yeah, yeah. It basically had all kinds of shit I did and a bunch <laughs> of shit they suspected I did. Oh, okay. And I didn't. But uh, he used to, you know, in the city, you could not park on the street after 2 a.m. But Ooh. he was always parked in front of his house, on the street, any time of the year, because, you know, he's a cop. Well, one morning, me and my buddy Richard uh, were on our way to school, and we walking by, and we're like, you know what? We need to do something about this. <laughs> so we gather the materials. We wait a week to the next garbage day. Garbage day. <clears throat> and uh, he put out like four, uh, four or five cans. I don't remember. I think some of it was yard waste. And... We went out there and tied a rope to each one. And this is back when we had metal cans. It wasn't plastic garbage cans. Okay. And we tied a rope to the handle, all of them. Then we coiled it up, and we hid it under some leaves. So he gets up, walks out to his car, and, of course, we're just down the street watching. <laughs> we don't want to miss the glorious end. Oh, of course. And he just, like, had one of those Chevy pickup trucks with the horizontal smokestacks and Thought he was all that in a bag of chips. Starts his car, takes off, uh, and gets about maybe 100 feet, and all these cans. Wah, bah, 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 <laughs> garbage <laughs> and shit going everywhere. He comes out of his vehicle, motherfucker, god damn. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we made sure we were out of sight because you know, school had started, and we'd get hammered for being truant. So. <laughs> Yeah, I really enjoyed fucking with that guy. Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for Support or Sundays, go to redonculus.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the meat gazer box.